गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग सर हेलो हेलो अजीत 
नमस्कार 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 वेलकम हेलो हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग Ya onah lan dong. Thank you. 
मैडम कौन गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम गुड Good morning and welcome to all to this webinar. I request our head of the department, Professor U C Hota, to address the gathering. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Badi. Bad. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome, welcome to Pandit. Pandit. That's why we are here. Department is a nice, nice lady. I am delighted. I am delighted. I am delighted. I am exalted. I am immensely overwhelmed to welcome distinguished guests of the webinar, esteemed Professor C. B. Dutta, Professor G. B. Nath. This is fellow Hemchand Pradhan, esteemed principal, Professor Prisi Pradhan, Professor S.K. Kumar, coordinator IQAC and IQAC team, dear delegates, participants, critics, friends, and students, and volunteers on the webinar and of the webinar, and hope. the mind the wind the wave the webinar to make the other world jealous don't be jealous jealous don't be jealous india shall emerge a super economy full globalization full globalization india shall usher in brilliant economies full globalization thank you thank you and welcome let's welcome all under the blue to the tux and i now request professor tapan kumar barik professor barik kindly 
rekindle the flame rekindle the flame thank you hello no super डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स प्रोफेसर यूसी होता अदर कलिग्स ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स रेस्पेक्टेड कलिग ऑफ एल एन कॉलेज जारसोगुड़ा आई क्यू एस सी कोर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर सरोज कुंवर टेक्निकल टीम ऑफ दी वेबनार respected participant from knock and corner of different universities and colleges research scholars all viewers your students and respected resource persons of today's webinar dr sri dattar sir dr jibin nath sir and dr hamachandra pradhan first of all on behalf of the department of economics and iqcl and college dasoda i heartily welcome all to this webinar after the introduction of perestroika and glasnost by mikhail gorbachev in our soil ussr in general an introduction of new economic reform in india in the shape of liberalization privatization and globalization by the then prime minister pv narsingh rao and dr manmohan singh in particular we have completed around 3 decades we are in the crossroad now especially in the new era of globalization ahead of terrorism the degradation of environment is biggest threat for the globe and for our existence question of sustainability is always sparking in the mind of social thinkers environmentalists world leaders and economists the demand and supply adjustment is always a question mark with respect to natural resources employment and gdp energy crisis human health hazards resource allocation and in many on sin field we are forced to choose between devil and deep sea amidst such crisis ellen college dashoda is organizing series of lecture in the name of great freedom fighter pandit lakshman adam misra under the aegis of iqac today's lecture is ninth in the series organized by the department of economics we have chosen topic which are relevant to the globe कौन एम आई ऑडिबल हेलो हेलो ऑडिबल सर ऑडिबल सर ऑडिबल ऑडिबल शुड आई स्पीक यस ए वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू टुडे आई वांट टू रादर लाइक टू स्टार्ट दिस सेमिनार इन अ डिफरेंट मैनर इट इज नॉट फिलोसफी एक्चुअली and a society that we live in at times springs of surprises it is so powerful that it modifies our understanding of life and even sometimes compels us to revisit our own wisdom of life a man at the age of 65 after arranging all the logistics of family sets out 
to fulfill his own cherished dream. And all of us, as you know, all of us dreams, but if dreams so affectionately cherished, most of this time do not scintillate to real life sensation. Yes, I am talking of that man, Sriraj Kishor Pradhan, a retired bank official who enrolls himself a career in medicine only to serve the humanity at large. With saluting the great ideas and the great men behind it, I today starts the seminar. Again, a warm welcome to all of you and wish you a very happy New Year's ahead. Esteemed speaker, Professor Jivinath, Professor Sivi Dutta, and young budding economist, loving Ham Chandra Pradhan on this occasion. Actually, we have come a long way in organizing this Pandit Lakhvinarayan Mishra series and perhaps it is the ninth one and already we are getting feedback that we are achieving the objective of spreading the ideals of that great legendary man who is behind all this pandit lakhvinayan misra the great freedom fighter and on whose name our institution has been established and his ideals continues to guide us every every time professor jb nath i worked with him sir in this college and very often you are a crusader of social justice you have lent a voice to the downtrodden taking ahead their voices to the mainstream and i came to learn that you are also working on human rights also editing journals like bikalpa bichar it was also that time when you were a lecturer i came to nail also you are editing on mesha so thank you for all this endeavor at this age because age is just a number as i told you and you sir hope that you carry it on will full throttle we have also dr cv dotto he needs no introduction he is our ex principal he continues to guide us and a fit all situation type of man we are always up to him for his uh, ideas and advices thank you sir for being connected with us on this occasion i also invite sri hemchandra pradhan iit scholar researcher he has published a number of papers visited many countries and worked in the field of economics and within short time it is not possible to hear from him but only we can get a prelude of what trending in recent times in the field of economics thank you once again uh thank you sir for your blessing uh now i request uh, ajit panagrahi bijapur burger the revolutionary poet and singer to sing a song related to environment so ajit panagrahi from bijapur burger samastang ko pehla johar namaskar salam bada suje हाँ सुबुचे हेलो द सुबुचे हाँ सुबुचे कैरी ऑन हाँ सुधीर पटनायक को लिखा हाँ दादा सुधीर पटनायक को लिखा माटी रमणी सो माटी जनों माटी जीवन आमो माटी रमणी सो माटी रे जनों मो माटी रे जीवन आमो माटी रे जीवन आमो माटी रा फसल रकते हमारा माटी को जीव दिन माटी को जीव दिन मटीर मनीष मटी रे जनम मटी रे जीवन आम मटी रे जीवन आम माटी बिना आम स्थिति ना ही साथी माटी रे मिसी बुदीने रक्त दे आम माटी को रखी बुभुली तो जानी तुम्हें 
মাটি বিনা আম স্থিতি নাহি সাথী মাটিরে মিশি বুদিনে রক্ত দে আম মাটি কু রখিবু ভুলি তো জানি তুমি মাটির মহত আসরি সকার ক্ষেত নিয়ে আম দিন বিল রূপ দর ফসল করিব নিয়ে সবু আম শ্রম ক্ষেত মূলিয়ার ঝাল রে গড়া যে প্রতিটি দানা গড়া যে প্রতিটি দানা কি খরা বরষা শীত বাকর শ্রম পাই নাহি শ্রম পাই নাহি মনা মাটি রমণীষ মাটিরে জনম মাটিরে জীবন আম মাটিরে জীবন আম যেউ মাটি পাই জগৎ তপন কিছি ছাড়ি কি পারিবু আমে রক্ত দেই আম মাটি কু রখিবু ভুলি তো জানি তুমি যে মাটি পাই জগৎ বঞ্চিছি ছাড়ি কি পারিবু আমে রক্ত দেই আম মাটি কু রখিবু ভুলি তো জানি তুমি তাকরে সাগর নদী নির্ঝরণী জল আমার জীবন জঙ্গল সেইটি পর্বত সেঠি জীব জগতর স্থান ইতিহাস যদি পড়িছ হে কেবে মনে কি আসিনি প্রশ্ন মনে কি আসিনি প্রশ্ন মাটির সম্পদ বিনা কি মিলন্ত মাটির সম্পদ বিনা কি মিলন্ত তুম সভ্যতার চিহ্ন তুম সভ্যতার চিহ্ন মাটির মনীষ মাটিরে জনম মাটিরে জীবন আম মাটিরে জীবন আম বঞ্চিকি পারিবে আম বংশধর এ মাটি ছাড়ি Uh, thank you ajit bhai for your revolutionary song and uh, thank for giving time to make the webinar successful now i request honorable speaker sri hemant hemachandra pradhan to present his webinar and paper sri hemachandra pradhan thank you very much sir so a very good morning to all is it audible ah uh, yeah audible. audible audible yeah so a very good morning to all and uh, it is my pleasure to be here and present uh, a topic related to economic globalization and how economic globalization relates with energy and uh, finally environmental qualities so yeah shall i present now the final just 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 so is it visible ppt is there so is it visible hello uh, not visible not visible okay ppt is not visible just in it i just if it is not visible hello no no get it just in it yeah it is visible oh, okay oh. 
Is it visible? Hello. Hello. Uh, it is not visible, Amanta. Uh, to me. Uh, anyone yes. visible, please? Just a minute. I am. I am refreshing, and once again, I will. I will. Yes. Yes. It is visible. Yes. It is visible. I. Uh, your PPT is visible, huh? Okay. Okay. So, shall I present now? Oh, you yeah, present. So once again, a very good morning to all. This is Samajandra Bhadha from uh, Department of Humanities and Social Science, Indian Institution of Technology, Madras, Chennai. So it is my pleasure to, to give a brief about economic globalization and how it's related to energy demand. And finally, environment and on the analysis. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, visible you present, yeah? Yeah, okay, okay. So this is the outline of the presentation. Uh, at the first slide, I'll, I'll cover the introvert one and what uh, in my economic globalization. Hello. I, I would request to uh, switch off the audio there so that I can hear the present. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I'm not visible. You are present. Okay. Visible now. Okay. 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 So, uh, some, uh, so is, uh, this is the outlines of the presentation. Uh, I'll, I'll present part time to the sun. Then I'll go through motivation. Uh, hello, hello, sir. So, my audio sound is coming off. Whoa. Yeah, hello, hello. Uh, now it is visible and audible. Eh? You can continue. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, okay. So, this is the outlines of the presentation. So in the first chapter, in the first slide, I'll cover introduction, uh, the meaning of economic globalization or overall economic overall globalization, then energy or an alternative energy, you can say that, or finally environment. Then uh, there are some factor where we motivate, why should I work on uh, economic globalization, energy and environment. The second one, I will see the motivation. I will give a brief introduction of motivation of the study, then derive the theoretical and empirical evidence. There are sort of literature. They have already worked on globalization, energy, and uh, environment. Then I define the research gap where derived from the literature. And we have conducted some research uh, by using data, and empirical method, econometrics use, and finally, result discussion and conclusion remark. So this is the introduction. Uh, the world has been focusing more global. When we are talking about globalization, then the world has been focusing more globalization through social, political, and economic integration, development of advanced technology, international finance, multinational operation, or MNCs, transactional cooperation and international trade. In one side, we are looking how globalized economy is growing off from all multidimensional aspect. We are looking from social perspective, from political perspective, as well economic perspective. So the rising dependency on globalization not only influence the human condition of the people or population, not only for developed economy as well as for the developing economy like India, China, Malaysia, or 
any other sort of developing economy but also it influences the social and political aspects of life and finally welfare is there so therefore according to gosgor and uh, rajan in 2017 they have published a paper in uh, the world economy right in world economy and clearly explain that the, the role of the international trade as a proxy for economic growth and that has played an important role to to make any country welfare and uh, to make a relation between uh, globalization in one side and its impact on uh, uh, energy uh, copeland and taylor in 2004 has uh, uh, discovered a theoretical paper that has published in journal of economic literature and that paper is fully talking about how economic globalization or fully globalization economy impact on energy through the pollution haven hypothesis this Basically, the pollution heaven hypothesis explains that the when the developed economy uh, make uh, pollution intensive production function a uh, growing output. At the same time, they they are polluting. At the same time, they are e growing the economy by increasing the output level. But the other side, they are polluting the economy, where environmental uh, quality or environmental policy is very restricted so they transport their uh, traditional or pollution intensive production function to any sort of developing economy or emerging economy like india where labor is abundant right labor is abundant so we can easily assess the labor to grow more output and on the, on the other side the environmental regulation is also flexible so we can get and more output so in one side we are looking for soft targeting or soft growth for the developing economy by rising employment generation program or increasing the per capita income of that country or investing more income on developing economy but the other side we is victimize economy by rising population right so so that is the current situation in a sort of developing country we are looking the same set of for developed economy also and later on in second section a couple of literature are talking or increasing drastically and contributing to green gas emission and this emission is contributing a large number of air pollution water pollution and a couple of paper are talking about carbon emission as a proxy for environmental quality right so the relationship between globalization and the environment is explained theoretically and empirically by a couple of literature like penjing and seven and mugyuan in 1982 so later on don bus uh, in 1971 explained that uh, a environment quality environment quality of any developing or developed economy is fully depend on trade flow or income or any other sort of factors of production so it is essential to have a study on globalization and how globalized economy impact on environmental quality so if i look at the historical data of, uh, of the globalization then globalization have appear after world world war second or initially 1960 because of emergence of international trade and importance of multinational cooperation it means or indirectly you can say that mnc different companies set of uh, that are invested by foreign union right so later on uh, in 1970 71 we came across the collapse of better note better note regime because of uh, uh, monetary shock or inflated situation in the economy so growth in that time the growth rate was very minimal so if i calculate the historical data to see the growth rate what happened before 1991 when new economic policy came to emerge right so so in that data so if i look at 1870 to 1913 the the volume of trade was only 3.4% right and after uh, 1930 to 1950 the growth rate of trade was very minimal it was 
about to one percent because of uh, exchange control, different restriction given by government, not only for in developing region but also for developed economy, right? So it was because of exchange control, then tariffs, of course tariffs, then quantity restriction, and finally World War Second or first. So it is very difficult to economy where uh, uh, where the output is very low, unemployment generation is not very much flexible, right? So later on, 1950 to 1973, growth rate of trade was 9%. It tossed uh, to 9% due to some way of flexible in the exchange rate market. It may be floating or may be uh, uh, fixed exchange rate. So, but after 1973, due to oil shock or uh, Arabian Arab of Israel war, the growth rate of trade declined drastically. Uh, it was happened till mid of 1980s, yeah, till 90s, 80. But after 80s to, to uh, 1991, it started increasing. Then after 1991, when new economic policy came into emerge, the pattern of globalization was drastically visualized or given importance by different different author, different different uh, organization, right? And now still the global pattern of globalization has been increasing. But if I see uh, the globalization in overall, we are only talking about economic globalization because we are talking about trade, uh, financial openness, but we are not that much of open in case of social globalization or political globalization because some country are uh, some restriction, rules and regulation. So this is the motivation to work on globalization and how it relates to energy. Or we can indirectly say that how economic globalization, when we are talking about globalization, basically we're talking about economic globalization. How economic globalization impact on energy demand? And why should I have a study on, uh, study on the role of economic globalization on energy? It may be renewable energy, like solar, wind, biomass, or bio, bio gas, or uh, uh, biothermal, right? Or in the other side, you can see the different pattern of global, different pattern of energy consumption. It may be coal, may be oil, or may be natural gas. So if I the energy consumption as world level has increased by 14,000, 421 million ton in 2019. And that contributes 3.2 percent more than 2017, and out of that energy, 81 percent of total energy comes from coal, oil, and natural gas. If I see the report given by World Bank, then OECD Economy of Bank of International Settlement, this only these three component contribute 83 percent, and these component are more polluted, pollution intensive. Uh, energy, so it is. It it has a necessary. It, it is necessary to have a look on the nature of coal consumption, nature of oil consumption, and how natural gas is behaving not only for developing country but also for developed economy. So uh, on the other side, if I see the sustainable development goal, there are 17 goal. Out of 17 goal, goal number seven is talking about energy. Uh, and that, that frame is talking about how energy affordable, reliable, sustainable, and how modern cleaner energy. So if I see the historical transaction of energy, the traditional people used uh, coal and oil to, to increase the level of output. But later, after 1991, if you see the level of, uh, if you see the use of coal and oil, it has, uh, it has decreasing. It has been decreasing uh, due to different uh, technological advance, advancement, due to due to innovation or new method adopted by different different industry. So all and and they transfer the thought of using coal and oil to natural gas and renewable energy, especially solar, wind, and bio biomass. 
right? So do, and they are transferring from one sort of energy to energy sort of, or we can indirectly say the alternative energy, right? We can say the alternative energy consumption because of uh, because of uh, pollution, because of the emission uh, released by the foreign industry. And basically the emission comes from household and industry transportation. So we are looking for how emission could be declined and what would be the procedure, what would be the policy the government should take care so that emission level should be declined, right? So in that, that, that SD, the sustainable development goal, they have clearly mentioned and predicted that emission should be declined. On the other hand, we have to, we have to use more renewable and gas energy, gas consumption, natural gas consumption to decline the pollution level. So therefore, moreover, the more, moreover, all government, not only for developing economy, but also for developed economy, it may be OECD or it may be BRICS economy or it may be G20, they are focusing uh, cleaner fuels production. Cleaner fuel basically the less, uh, less pollution intensive and that is happening because of technological advancements and innovation pattern in the production function. So, the, so if I see the data given by 2017-18, the carbon emission intensity reduced to 7%. And now we are targeting or predicted to decline further to 5% in 2030 and 2050. And on the other side, how globalization relates to environmental quality, right? Uh, CO2 emission is a proxy of environmental quality. So according to BP Statistical Review of World Economy 2020, the OECD economy, it means the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, contributes 37.2% of emission in 2017, whereas the non-OECD economy contributing 62.8% of emission to the total energy, right? So if I see the World Bank classification, there are 246 countries, but if I see the OECD, if I see the UNDP, only 189 countries are there because they have, uh, they have uh, enrolled the member country, right? Only 37 OECD economy, but they are contributing 37.2% of emission, whereas other, other, if I did of 37 country from all country, then other country contributing only 62.8% of emission to it, total, total energy. So, and that is very much higher than European Union. If you see the European Union, then they contribute only 10.6%, African country 3.6%, 6%, although African countries, uh, a low developed economy, they are very much scared about environmental quality. Middle East uh, contributing only 6.3%, Europe 12.6%, and subsequently North America 18.3% respectively. Therefore, it is important, it is very much or essential also to reduce the CO2 emission for sustainable development or to have a better quality of environment. Therefore, the OECD and uh, International Energy Agency predict the re re now we use renewable energy is only 17% to total energy. So it is predicted to increase the renewable energy to 85% in 2050. And that could be possible if we increase the awareness, if we increase the a modern way of technology, innovation way of technology to decline the emissions level. And these are the some uh, theoretical and empirical literature which have already conducted by different group of author, not only for Indian author, but also for a sort of author who, has, who have already recognized on energy. So why energy is important? There are some sort of literature, Reddy and Supreme 1979, Ram Kumar, Hills, A1981, and subsequently there are other authors, they are talking about energy is important or energy consumption is important in ecosystem.
so the scale of production will increase in the traditional method people are talking about uh, uh, labor and uh, capital le uh, labor land labor capital is a factor of production now we can uh, the modern economy include energy also as a factor of production right so if we increase the scale of production then globalization new mnc will come to the picture and that will impact on energy demand so of course the second part is technology impact we use modern technology or modern sort of innovation then that could be possible through more open economy or because we are not that much of our or modern technology because that could be imported or that could be taken from some or idea could be generated from some developed economy right so let on composition like a couple of paper or a couple of researchers are uh, talking about uh, composition effect it may be uh, may be different it may be scale we can increase the scale of production and globalize the economy or increase or increase the economic growth on the other case we can use modern way of technology innovation and spill over the market through globalization that is composite both we can talking about both scale. when we are talking about both scale and technology and combinedly talking about scale and technology that is that would become under uh, composition effect so that is the theoretical implication later on we can see the empirical study given by nar and smith they are talking about neutral effect it means globalization does not have any role to impact on energy right it's sort of uh, literature talking about neutral effect but it varies from country to country when we are talking about uh, brics economy uh, brazil india china south africa then of course uh, the globalization plays an important role to impact on uh, energy demand because we are importing energy right we are importing or we are energy uh, dependency country we are not independent country so other case uh, if you see the sadaski to the 11 and 12 and douglas douglo and k to the 13 there is a feedback relationship between globalization and energy demand it means sometimes globalization plays an important role to impact on energy it may be renewable energy or it may non renewable energy right on the other case sometimes the energy also plays an important role to play impact on globalize to increase the scale of industry or technology we use more energy and if we produce more output the other country will will influence the production procedure in developing economy and invest so indirectly we are influence globalization also and there is a uh, there is a mix that was given by Sahaba said to the important so both the global as it means uh, there is a bi-directional causality relationship between globalization may impact on energy energy may impact on globalization sort of analysis so in the second section uh, when we are talking about literature related to economic globalization and environment there are sort of uh, little rebellion to the 14 Harris Harrison to the 6 D Harry at 2008 and a sort of literature still the latest they're talking about globalization plays an important role to impact on poverty income inequality e economic growth and energy consumption when they're talking about energy they're talking about overall total energy consumption they are not talking about any pattern of energy consumption because i have come across a lot of paper where they have mentioned total energy but not they have not clearly mentioned any sort of how global has an impact on coal how global has an impact on oil shock we are talking about how positively or negatively it means when we are talking about globalization improve the environmental quality it means if we follow more globalized economy the environmental quality is growing up and co2 emission is declining we are using such type of technology it may be energy efficient technology that mitigate the economic growth by declining the co2 emission right for our future generation on the other side, globalization increases the CO2 emissions. It means globalization degrades the environmental quality by releasing more CO2 emissions, right? It may be because of uh, more energy used in the production form. So without carrying the environmental quality, without carrying the filterization of energy, right? 
so it is very much essential it is not for personal view it is given by the world bank oecd they are targeting or environmental economists are targeting how to decline in the co2 emission in global level it may because it impact impact the environmental quality air water and other sort of uh, environment right so it is essential to have a study uh, on environment and these three set of are interlinked because globalization is happening they are using more energy if they will use more energy by cyclical process pollution have an hypothesis come to the picture and uh, for the sake of economic growth we are releasing more co2 emission then we are degrading the although we are focusing more globalized economy to target uh, some sort of growth or development but the other side we are blaming we are we are, we are victimized the economy of of our environment by polluting uh, not only for any household but also for in general level so this by by reviewing all the literature literature from starting to latest 2020 uh, we will conclude that mixed finding are right in the relationship between globalization and energy demand or especially pattern of energy demand as well as uh, uh, renewable and non renewable energy so the impact of economic globalization when uh, we are talking about economic globalization it is basically talking about uh, the classic economic globalization given by Drehi in 2006. Um, and now the different environmentalist uh, innovate different definition or proxy for economic globalization, uh, like uh, Gusgar 2018 described economic, reconstructed economic globalization by including some restriction, right? So later on, revisited economic globalization came to the picture. Uh, so different pattern of level of economic globalization there therefore i mentioned economic globalization in plural form on energy is high important for policy makers. so it is very much essential not only for a, a country level but also for world level to to see a picture to visualize the relationship between eco economic globalization and how its impact on energy demand Further, it is also important to study renewable energy policy along with economic complexity. I have mentioned one word, economic complexity. When we're talking about economic complexity, it is it, it basically comprises skill-based knowledge or knowledge-based knowledge, capability, approach, structural transformation that has been happening not only for developing economy, but also for developed economy. And that is happening to, to increase the awareness among people about the emission releasing in industry as well as household and third one is empirical study we are using the latest data by using uh, by by using latest data we validate the same sort of to developing country as well as developed economy and finally we empirically validate the validate the pollution have an approach with if there is an environmental strict policy then how the uh, pollution level what is the pollution level and how it react to economic growth same thing uh, it is happening for developing country as well as developed economy so for that analysis uh, we have already conducted an analysis and sort of publication has coming up in very good journal so basically we have to use these data so i have mentioned this data to to give a clear picture about the relationship between economic globalization a pattern of energy or alternative energy or transformation of energy from from uh, non-renewable to renewable that has been happening and finally how it impacts on environmental quality so data we have used the data on energy consumption coal oil and natural gas and level of economic globalization that has already discussed the classic uh, economic globalization index that is also called as classic economic globalization given by Drehari and reconstructed revisited economic globalization and economic complexity, data on CO2 emission, other macroeconomic variable as for the literature, that that may place an input, that may play an important role to impact on energy as well as uh, environmental quality.
So these are the some uh, advanced econometrics method which we have used to conclude a empirical result. So this is the sort of so I I am skip I am skipping this because it may be difficult to understand. So as for our result, uh, we we conclude that economic globalization promotes renewable energy demand across economics. Basically, we are talking about OECD economy because they are in earlier time. If you see the OECD economy, were total energy they they called it energy supply country but now they are consuming they are declining the consumption pattern they are declining the uh, selling of energy to any developing country or emerging market economy because self consumption is there they basically they are using energy to to road construction right to to industry establishment and other sort of activities household on the other side in general we are talking about if more economic globalization then uh, renewable energy will be there it means if we openly uh, trade with any country we get some knowledge about the pollution right so we are declining the emission by promoting renewable energy it may be solar it may be wind or it may be water we can use that and to to make production that that is very very less harmful to the environment is finally economic growth will be there. So on the other section, we have deeply gone through some work and see when uh, we are talking about globalization, we, in the earlier term, we are talking about renewable energy in general term. Later one, we conducted some study, whether it is for lower section, middle section or upper class, who is responsible to uh, promote renewable energy, right? So we, we conclude that the lower section uh, and upper section are degrading the environmental quality or they are not in favor of renewable energy consumption use. When we are looking about lower section, they, they can't go for renewable energy because they, they are unable to get a, get a meal per day, right? So we can't say you go and use solar or you convert water, marine water to uh, sweet water. So it is very difficult because they, they are able to sustain a life. How can we say uh, to, to use some expenditure of in or your part of income to, to renewable energy? So it is very difficult for them to survive by using renewable energy. On the other case, when we are looking for the uh, upper class, so uh, they, are, they are also not using renewable energy why they are not using because they have capable to use but they are growth oriented pattern or stock they are following growth orientation growth oriented pattern they they are uh, uh, doing uh, more more non-renewable energy for less less uh, cost of production for more, more output for the sake of economic growth, for the more industrialization, they are polluting uh, the environment by, by using uh, non-renewable energy, but they are not in favor of uh, renewable energy. It is the middle people, middle class people who are habituated for renewable energy. So uh, that, that is the result we received from our analysis. In the second one, we see how in the second of second research, we see how economic globalization react to different pattern of energy consumption or, or uh, that non-renewable non -renewable energy consumption. So we have taken only three pattern. One is coal, second one is oil, and third one is uh, natural gas. Yes. Why these three pattern? Because these three pattern contribute only 81% of total energy. Please uh, conclude. We have also some other speaker, please. Okay, okay, okay. Give me only two, three minutes. I'll, I'll conclude it here. And uh, so, so economic globalization reduces the coal and oil consumption and wood, which is pollution, more pollution intensive, and accelerate the gas consumption across economy. And finally, we have uh, we have uh, done a very good research on economic globalization that uh, plays an important role on environmental quality. It means economic globalization improve the environmental quality. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hello. Now I conclude. Yeah. Now the floor is open for questions or 
any sort of doubt. Uh, thank you, Hemachandra, for your nice presentation. Uh, thank you, sir. Very big topic. And yes, uh, yes, I'm sorry yes. that uh, we could not provide mm -hmm. you much time. Uh, yes, anyway, yes. Thank you for your uh, giving time for uh, this nice deliberation. Uh, now, uh, I would like to request uh, Professor Dr. Golak uh, Nath to uh, speak on the topic, Professor G.B. Nath. Uh, sir, uh, please uh, no, mute your. Am I only audible? Uh, now it is audible. Yes. Sir. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm audible. Oh, uh, yeah, audible. Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Okay, okay. I'm starting. Uh, esteemed principal, Professor PC Pradhan, uh, Professor Barik, Professor Hemachandra Pradhan. Professor Dutta, uh, first of all, uh, my homage to uh, Pandit Lakshmi Narayan Mishra, uh, whose memorial lecture we are having today. And uh, my, uh, I will be just presenting my talk in three uh, parts. The first part I want to devote that what is globalization and how far the globalization affect the environmental situation in the country. Uh, first of all, globalization we should know is the international expansion of capitalistic relation of production. That is globalization, that is imperialistic globalization. So that the spread of capitalistic relation of production, capitalistic ethics, capitalistic values, and the transition of entire society to a gigantic market. Globalized economies, first of all, transform, transform everything, transform the service, health, education, leisure, entertainment, beauty parlors, hotel, restaurant, everything, the whole world become a market. Otherwise, we can say that that is the marketization of the economy. So that expansion of the home markets by commercialization of agriculture, commercialization of banking, commercialization of insurance and real estates, stocks, uh, stock exchange, so that there is a promotion of free trade zones, promotion of expert, uh, export promotion zones, and that of the growth of transnational capitals. So that first of all, we should understand by the meaning of globalization that it is the expansion of capitalistic system of production, number one. Number two, globalization means internationalization of the production, means Imagine profit and wealth is being created and that is being accumulated in the economy in the form of saving and investment, as a result of which there is growth of transnational corporations and multinational corporations. That is globalization. So in, you, you will find in USA, UK, Japan, Germany, they have created huge monopolies. 
they have created in the third world a market a, for that of extractive industries. Their concern is with plantation. Their concern is with the primary sector. Their concern is with the mining sector. So that in USA, you will find Ford, General Motors, Goodyear, Firestone, General Electric, Nestle's, Olivetti, Volkswagen, so that in European market, they have dominated. So that in India life uh, type of countries, when internationalization of capital is there under globalization in India, you will find that these multinational companies and transnational companies, they were demanding to for deregulation of the market. They were demanding for liberalization of the market. They were demanding for level playing field, opening up the poor countries to the multinational companies. They were now the multinational companies now ruling the roost. So that the multinational institutions like World Bank, International Monetary Fund, World Trade Organization, now they were advising these countries for structural adjustment in the economy. So now multinational companies locally, they are, they were industries where there is abundance of the cheap labor, where there is abundance of cheap raw materials, and where is the law of your transport costs, low transport costs. So that there is availability of infrastructure and market. That is why these multinational companies, they want to come to India. And the third feature of your uh, globalization is the new international division of labor. In a globalized economy, the rich countries like European countries or American countries, they were dividing the world. In the world division of labor, there are some rich capitalistic countries, they were producing manufacturing products, and the poor countries, they were producing primary products. And operating are so far as there are locational advantages in various countries. In, so that now the technology has uh, changed, the communication system has changed. Now there is information technology has come so that this subcontractory has started. Due to the, this subcontracting, now the rich countries, they were just uh, specializing in the manufacturing of the patent of the products and the uh, research and development of products where there is much more skill is required. But for underdeveloped countries, for poor countries like India, they, so far as the manual jobs are concerned, so far as the unskilled jobs are concerned, so far as the manufacturing and assembling things are concerned, now they have come to that of the poor countries like India. So that is the third feature of your globalization of in the economy. The fourth uh, that uh, feature of globalization will be, uh, that is what we call the internationalization of the finance capital. Means now there is a financialization of capital in the world, where either capital Is there any technical problem? Sarankar is saying that there is a network problem. Oh. Sarankar is saying that there is a number of people. Sir, sir, come on. Sir, sir, come on.
Uh, Mathasar is uh, rejoining due to some technical problem uh, unable to connect. Uh, we may take him uh, during the question and such that. Uh, 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 sir. Uh, Natha, sir. Uh, not uh, uh, please unmute, sir. Sir, please unmute. Sir, please unmute. sir, your mic is muted. Please unmute it. Barry, sir, you unmute me. Uh, it is not possible to unmute. <laughs> oh. uh, th uh -huh. Uh, anyway, uh, I will uh, request uh, Professor G.B. Nath uh, during the question and answer session. Uh, now, I would like to request uh, our Honorable Lex Principal, uh, Professor Dr. C.B. Dutta. Uh, one minute. Uh, Natha, sir, upon uh, you unmute, Kori Deme. I was talking about the features of globalization. Uh, I was talking about the features of globalization, and I have, in that sense, I have uh, already talked that globalization means that of the uh, internationalization, that is the internal expansion of the capitalistic relation of production, that is the imperialistic globalization is going on. Second, I have told that internationalization of the production, now the production is being taken out by various multinational companies and transnational companies. I have also told about that of the uh, new international division of labor. So it was hard up to that uh, since I think up to hard that thing. I, is it? Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Up to the division of labor, you have told. Yeah. That, those things I have already told. Okay. And now uh, about the internationalization of the finance capital, that is the financialization of the market. So the crisis in the so one of the countries that is spreading from one country to other country because because now there is the international in, uh, interdependence is being increasing in various countries. So that the speculative capital that is the capitalist is spending or investing the money in the stock market, share market, and the debenture market as a result of which they have turned the market into a gamble of that of your chain of gamble, which is just like a casino, as a result of which the real economy is suffering. And the next feature that I am talking about is that of the in a globalized economy. All these multinational companies and transnational companies, they were asking for the undeveloped countries like India to privatize their economy, 
to liberalize their economy, to liberalize the, their trade and industries, to expand the unwanted restrictions which are there in the economy, to uh, get over those restrictions, so that there is globalization and liberalization of the economy. When you are globalizing the economy, you are bound to liberalize the economy because they were interdependent. Globalization, privatization, and liberalization, they were interdependent. So in the interdependent world, when we are having globalized capitalistic economy, we are opening our economy, we are opening our trade and commerce, we are opening our the, the, that of the market for the uh, multinational companies, and uh, we are also privatizing our own public sector undertakings. These are the features of globalization. In such a capitalistic economy, in such a globalized economy, we want to just now, what is this so far as the environmental concern is there? So now the earth is becoming warmer day by day when we just using coal, we are using gas, we are using oil. So now fossil fuels that are now the modern society is being more dependent on that of the coal, gas and oil. So that they were producing carbon dioxide and in the, in the sense oxygen and that of this carbon when they are mixing there is much more carbon, production of carbon dioxide. So since the, when there is pre-industrialized world, these carbon dioxide emissions were quite less, but now in the industrialized world, we'll find that 1.1% one one that is increasing in the um, heat or temperature of the world. So that uh, the question is, who is polluting the world? Who is em emitting the carbon dioxide? It is the industry which is emitting the carbon dioxide. Much more carbon dioxide is being emitted by the consumption of energy. Consumption of energy in the sense, consumption of oil, consumption of gas, and consumption of coal. Then the second one that is the most important pollutant is the industry. 21% of the pollution is coming from industry. 35% of the pollution comes from that of your um, energies. And 24% of the um, carbon dioxide is coming from that of your agriculture, like deforestation or um, uh, uh, transportation and that of the building. So transport uh, is having 14% contribution towards that emission. And if you take into consideration the areas, rural and urban areas, we will find that rural area. Hello? 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 Uh, sir, audible. Continue. Huh? Uh, the, the urban sector is more responsible for that of the emission of carbon than that of the rural areas. Only rural area contribute 30 per 30 percent, and urban area contributes 70 percent of the emission of the carbon dioxide. So, which nation is responsible? If you will take we'll talk of the advanced countries and the backward countries, we will find that in 2018, 7.9 percent of the billion of tons of carbon dioxide was emitted. So. This uh, China was the uh, contributing 11.3 billion tons of carbon dioxide. USA was contributing 3.5.3 billion tons of carbon dioxide, and India's contribution was 2.6 percent of the carbon dioxide. So that these are the countries, the rich countries, they were emitting much more carbon dioxide. Country-wise, we will find that the rich countries were contributing more. Then sector-wise, we'll find that the energy sector is emitting more carbon dioxide. And by area-wise, we'll find that the urban areas, they are contributing more carbon dioxide. So that the root of the problem in the world is the use of the energy sources like coal, that is of gas, and industrial development, which is taking place now. They were dependent on that of the coal and oil and gas. That is why there is much more uh, emission of carbon dioxide in the world. So now, uh, if you take into consideration the emission per person, we'll find that 
European countries and American society, they were contributing their per head money contribution to this uh, pollution is much more. So the uh, so far as the profit uh, interest capitalism is there, capitalism is a economic system which. Uh, not audible, sir. Hello. Uh, uh, there is some uh, technical problem uh, from uh, Professor G. B. Nath. Uh, we will invite him during the question and answer session. And now I would like to request our honorable former principal, Professor C. B. Dutta, to speak few lines on the topic. Professor C. B. Dutta, sir. Thank you, Tapan. I you, hope sir. I'm audible and visible both. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank we you. have already into one hour and 22 minutes by now. So people are gradually losing their interest. So let me sum up a bit about the alternative energy nobody had talked about. Uh, because uh, on the economics and economy, uh, Professor Nath and uh, Mr. Hamachandra have already they have talked. Uh, respected principal, Pradhan Babu, dear brother and HOD economics, Uttam Hota, my colleagues and those who are in this meeting. Since I am an ecologist, I would prefer to talk on alternate energy and how it will influence economy. Now, uh, a lot of countries and a lot of uh, developments have occurred throughout the world with the development of science and technology. But uh, an UN estimate tells us that around 1.6 billion people do not have electricity till now. And another 1 billion to 1.5 billion they do not have a good water supply. I'm talking about uh, small countries in Africa, Southeast Asia and elsewhere, where this kind of a situation is there. Now, why is such a situation has arisen? Why we are unable to provide them with the basic amenities that they should have? That is that we have discarded and neglected the mother nature. Mother nature has a bounty to offer us. Mother Nature has a lot of resources which we can utilize. It is made for all, it is meant for us. But uh, since we have exploited and overexploited the Mother Nature, we are facing difficulties like, and it has uh, all the mechanism to equalize with us. And in the shape of Corona, it is doing so. Yesterday, I was watching KBC, that uh, Amitabh Bachchan show. Padma Bibhushan Anil Kumar Joshi was there as a Karmavir. He is an environmentalist and he has taught people in the Himalayan, sub-Himalayan region of how to use nature to get alternate energy. He had got a chakki, that gaham kisa chakki kind of thing with the flow of water, harnessing that hydropower energy from that natural streams and natural nalas present in their area. He has taught them how in the mandir like Vaishno Devi, Kedarnath and Badrinath, the Mandya and the Bajra which were not utilized and the Mokka which was not utilized as a profitable crop there. He has talked to the shrine and uh, made the prasadam, 
made up of this uh, mandia, this bajra, and this uh, maka, so that the farmers got benefited. What I'm trying to talk about this is that the non-renewable energy sources are gradually depleting. Since they are gradually depleting, we are investing more and more to get them out for the mining purpose. Cost body body chaluji, since everybody is following Odia, it is better that I talk in that language. Jehetu cost body body chaluji, tamar extraction of pine. Ebong tankor extraction pine, jo jagar ame mining koruje, se jagar natural resource ku ame dire dire, taku kati chalije, hani chalija, obok chaya hai chaliji in one hand. The cost of production is increasing, the value of the market price of these resources are increasing, fossil fuel, coal, etc., etc., etc. Simultaneously, the degradation of the environment. Has anybody talked about what a gotcha cartilage get our chati hochi amor economy go in terms of the oxygen produced, in terms of the soil it is producing, in terms of the fertility it is giving to the soil? No, nobody is thinking about that while cutting a tree. Nobody is thinking about that while cutting the tree for exploiting minerals and all that. Now, we have looked into the social impact. We have looked into the environmental impact. We also should look into the economical impact of any such kind of exploitation that we are doing. And it is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day we are celebrating. Earth Day is celebrated in April the 22nd. The theme for 2020 of Earth Day is climate action. Climate action is related. I will only talk about the theme of your seminar that use of renewable energy resource is going to solve the problem in the future. Now, what happens? There is a concept now of environmental economics which undertakes theoretical and empirical studies of the economic effect of national and local government or environmental policies around the world. Tarmane, cost benefit among alternate environmental jo policy taku deal kore se pollution ho water quality ho toxic substance ro handling ho ba onno kichu ho eko environmental economics se ame include kori chu renewable energy resource have a ability to complete or compete the world uh, energy demand or the world uh, Okay, energy demand will it go out the cook? Kahikina, dire dire, a non renewable energy resource, comi comi jibo. Kintu, non renewable energy ru, jota ame chari prokarebe ame youth kurujo, wind energy hella, hydro power energy hella, jota pani rubijuri sokti ame pouchu ebe. Out a tidal energy use kurujo, out a geothermal energy, charta energy ebe yujoji. So, we use hydropower energy. We use hydropower energy. We use hydropower energy. We use hydropower energy. We use hydropower Maintenance activity by Amku Amuru Prelibi Korajauji. Only one of Pesaduna, the Amu Prelibi Korajuzo. I am empty of the system made of Koriba, Jodora came a free hegiba, a procar demand room. Empty Priaba, Jetale, renewable energy, I use Koriba. During uh, when uh, our NAC visit, if my colleagues remember, we had installed a solar energy panel in our college, Ellen College. I hope that is functioning and uh, we can improve on that. We can uh, have more and more solar panels so that in case of electricity failure or kind of that, we can use them. Whatever is that, now the economics of ecology or economics of the environment has to be assessed before using any product. Economics koji. The Tome society prati tomorrow for Tobiochi. Future go akire rokikri. Gote lokorbe os with Hanoho. Can you at least go to loko Pukrutahuta, Dwara, Yeta Hala, and environmental economics rock team? 
how we can do it by encouraging the use of renewable energy jana mote joke re kahala agya cycle jibe cycle ko economic effect hoba economic end effect hoba agya economic effect hoba production bond hoi ba bike ro loko bis cycle chalale bike maintenance wala bo ke mor bet sat that was a joke he was doing on me but whatever it is when people start using such kind of energy to commute less use of fossil fuel that will have a greener greener earth why a greener earth because ame gude carbon footprint ame chadi chadi jau ke carbon footprint ta badi badi jau ke carbon footprint is equivalent to carbon dioxide emission carbon dioxide among methane gas jete prochur pariman ra ame chadi chadi jau ke environment re environment ku nashto kar kar chalu je gacha kati kri jau ke oxygen production honi kintu carbon badi badi chali ji which will gradually come to a situation where the world will not be very much habitable so i was very much impressed by anil kumar joshi's talk yesterday in kbc and i support his views that always the development and the ecological use of resources should be in a manner which should have a profit for the society but should not harm even a single person nature it is a common property you are using nadi ko you are using samudra ko you are using i am using it is a common property it is not anybody's uh, own property so such common properties while using they do not get depleted prithvi thiba parjanto surya raibo prithvi thiba parjanto nadi raibe nala raibe gote problem hela jete bele ame renewable energy use karu ju anyo ka ko se effect karu nai mane karo pakistan re bahut prakar pollution hela कि अमेरिका रे मशीन फेसिन चली छी तमे सिना गुटे सरहद रे जमीन ऊपर बाउंड्री लगे दबो आकाश रे बाउंड्री लगेबो कि इटा पाकिस्तान रो आकाश इटा इंडिया रो आकाश इटा अमेरिका रो आकाश सेठी जदी घर घर ना दरे चलिला मशीन ऑक्सीजन इंडिया रो बिटानी हे कि जिवो सुतरा सेठी रो डेवलपमेंट हम को इफेक्ट करू जी व्हिच विल बी लेसेंड व्हेन वी यूज द रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी रिसोर्स सो इट्स टाइम टू लुक इनटू द फ्यूचर it is time to adopt a green technology it is time to see a situation assess a situation where the three pillars of the development like the uh, society the environment and the development should go hand in hand i hope i have taken my time already thank you for inviting me and over to the panbari for uh, discussion thank you uh thank you sir for your nice deliberation and uh, we are fortunate to have you in our uh, webinar and uh, time is uh, 12:30 and uh, we are behind uh, 15 minute late probably for question and answer session anyway i will take uh, one or two question uh, uh professor nath uh, are you there online professor nath is online yes uh, yes i can very good yes very good one one question for you uh, may not be related to this yes uh, question is uh, what will be the fate of indian farmer in this age of uh, globalized india uh, shamlal naik uh, professor of political science from uh, dv college uh, bhatli what will be the fate of indian farmer in the age of globalized india uh, uh, thank you thank you very nice question actually mane we are disturbed and in the bhatli burger areas he must have seen that how after globalization of the economy how government of india has reduced the subsidies to the farmers so now that the cost of inputs are going on increasing why the cost of inputs are going on increasing because now the indian farmer is in the hands of the multinational companies the multinational uh, fertilizer companies the multinational that of your um, pesticide companies the seed companies now they want to capture indian agriculture during the green revolution period they have captured the indian agriculture and now they were in a more vigorous way 
now since there is three bills they have been come up in the parliament and now for which there is pigeons movement against those bills now these bills will have a death knell to the farming community because the multinational companies now they want to enter into the indian agriculture they have already entered during the green revolution period we have seen in the burgad and bhatli areas after the irrigation is being provided by the hirakud dam project that whole area of the irrigated area is being captured by multinational companies through their fertilizer and through their pesticide and through their seeds now they want to capture the produce itself to market itself so that in future much more danger is coming after this multi globalization of the economy yes yes so bari ko yes can i talk sir you are audible sir audible nahi i have already finished yes i uh, i replied it to the question yes hello hello uh, i replied uh, to the question uh, uh, i i want to ask uh, this question to professor dapta uh the question is asked by dr santosh patra it's asked whether any restriction to explosive rise of carbon emission due to vehicular emission in urban forest that is urban concrete forest well uh the standards uh, have been already there but then the manufacturers and they are uh, people who are helping them they do not follow these standards very scrupulously actually uh, if there is a situation suppose there is a factory in your area it is emitting a large amount of carbon dioxide and you are not benefiting from that you are harming from that so either he pays you to have put you in an uncomfortable situation or you pay him so that bhai do not emit more carbon dioxide this is a kind of situation that should be there if a particular vehicle is emitting uh, pollution beyond a particular level he or she should be fined he or she should be penalized so uh, in case of the factory and so in case of all kind of polluting agencies but nobody listens to that because of absence of a strict protocol and absence of a strict law against it thank you uh, thank you uh, professor datta uh, another question is there uh, actually time is uh, 12:35 we are 5 minute ahead of time uh, so we will not take more question and uh, the feedback link is given and i request all the participants uh, to fill up the form for the certificate now i would like to request uh, dr saroj kaur iqc coordinator to extend the vote of thanks dr saroj kaur please extend the vote of thanks hello hello sir ram chandra pradhan uh, research fellow iit chennai i thank you for your nice presentation in this occasion so we are proud of you sir <coughs> professor gb nath uh, ex principal gandhi mahavidyalaya and also uh, 
actually economics in our college so we are very thankful to you sir you are enjoying your talk thank you sir for this participation in the webinar for a long time we meet you sir we are very much obliged to you professor cb doctor ex principal of this college so we are the brain child of this webinar thank you sir you always present in all the webinar so we are very much grateful to you professor not professor kishi pradhan principal of this college who allow us to do this webinar thank you sir ajit kumar panigrahi in the initially he gave a beautiful song about mother land ma mati thank you ajit bhai for nice presentation professor uttam charan hota hod economics and his team tapan kumar barik japani patel who have a very much helpful to do this webinar thank you the department of economics so arranging such a beautiful webinar thanks all the students who participated and also well, teachers and scholars well, 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 so we are thankful everybody who have a successful webinar lastly i thank our technical team sonamoy purohit and other members who help us to have a successful webinar on this day thank you everybody thank you all uh, thank you i thank the coordinator dr kaur for uh, providing us platform to organize such a beautiful uh, seminar and uh, on behalf of the department of economics i extend all my thanks and pranam to namaskar thank you thank you sir sabko jo hai dalwa ko samjha everybody is happy it was a good seminar saroj it was a good seminar aur lagala seminar tha like apun ja start